Hey everybody. A few quick notes before starting today's episode. The first thing I want to touch on is I snagged another five-star review on iTunes. This review comes from a user who goes by the name B Humps, and it's titled Amazing and Relatable. B Humps says, Philip, I would love to be interviewed. I have some awesome stuff for an incredible good story that everybody would love. Let me know. Thanks, B Humps. The next topic that I want to touch on is I opened up the possibility for you, the listener, to become a patron of this podcast. If you're interested in donating a little bit of money, whether it's $1, $5, $10 or more per month, I would be so grateful. If this is something that you would like to do or would like to at least look into, head over to psychotropic.podbean.com and click on the Become a Patron button in the upper right-hand corner of my page. And yeah, thanks in advance. By no means is this podcast ever going to be anything that requires payment, but if you did decide you wanted to donate, I, I don't even know what to say about it. All I can say is thank you. The final thing I want to touch on is I am somewhat of an amateur photographer. And it's been an idea of mine for some time to open up an Etsy account, which I was able to start doing over the weekend. So if you have an empty wall space that you're looking to be filled with a picture, whether it's of some budding marijuana or the picture I feature on Psychotropic, head over to Etsy and type in Psychotropic Studio all one word, and have a look. I'd definitely be interested to hear what you think. With all that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and if you do, definitely drop me a line. Uh, You can do so at psychotropicpodcast at hotmail.com. Also, leave a review wherever you get your podcasts. Hope you enjoy. alluded to going to raves and the drug scene that's inherent. Could you describe your first experience obtaining and taking a substance other than marijuana at one of these raves? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, like I had mentioned in our, in our previous conversations, um, I guess a little bit of backstory and I talk too much. So if you can tell me to get back to the point, tell me to get back to the point. But, uh, my buddy and I, you know, uh, back in our freshman year of college, so 2014 was when we really started listening to that type of music, you know, regularly other than just the top couple songs. And we, uh, made plans to go to that to to go to that festival. So we had all these different plans and whatnot Which planned out. It? Electric Forest. I'm sorry, it's in Rothbury, Michigan, about 30 minutes north of Muskegon. Psychotropic presents Nugget. Um, so we, we, we assumed that we could get kind of anything we wanted up there, but we brought, uh, we just brought weed just cause that's what we had and that's what we, you know, wanted to do, uh, back to your original conversation or sorry, your original point. Uh, the first, I guess, experience we had doing that was we took, um, I think it's a four day festival started Thursday. So it would have been that Friday night. We, um, we took Molly, or at least 
I still call it Molly, but I guess listening to your podcast and seeing how it's the press pill. So I guess more, it's more ecstasy than, than, um, than Molly itself. But we, we took that and it was my first time ever, ever taking it. And that shit hit me hard and quick. We were in just general camping, so you just, you know, show up with your vehicle, pitch a tent, you know, bring out maybe a pop-up awning, coolers, and, you know, a little, little camp girl, that sort of stuff. Um, you know, we had read online, you know, between Reddit and, you know, different other forums of different stuff, you know, what to expect or how to expect. So we really didn't think we would have any troubles finding anything, and we realized quick that we wouldn't. Uh, we hadn't even been there, you know, two hours yet. We just finished up setting up our camp, and people were already... You know, just walking up and down the paths, kind of poking their heads in people's camps, you know, happy for us, welcome, you know, striking up a conversation. Is this your first, is this your first forest? Is this your first festival? You know, just kind of meet and greet type deal. Uh, but people are all the time, you know, back and forth, walking in and out of campsites, just seeing, hey, do you guys want anything? Do you have anything? Do you have anything we, you know, we can buy or anything that you'd like to buy from us? Um, and that first night, Thursday night we didn't want to do anything right away because we just didn't know how you know whether it's undercover cops or security we didn't know how anything like that works so we just really drank that Thursday night but um, you know during the day when the venue itself isn't you know that packed the music and stuff really doesn't go on till about 6 o'clock and goes till about 2 or 3 a.m. Um, the best way I can put it is just take your best tailgate experience that you've had and magnify it and throw in a bunch of party drugs i mean it's just a giant party during the day people hanging out listening to music um you know just walking from campsite to campsite just you know seeing what's up where are you from um you know that sort of stuff but how we got it is just people walked up to us and was just like hey you know um do you guys want to want to buy anything and at that point we knew that we were looking for molly um, and this experience was actually really, really crazy because I wasn't trying to get or, you know, we weren't trying to get too, I guess, nervous about it or sketchy. But I had made a point about wanting to test it. Um, you know, you hear all these stories, especially nowadays you with fentanyl lace cocaine and different stuff like that. We just we wanted to you know ensure we were getting what we were you know paying for. And this dude carried around a test kit and we ended up testing it twice just because my buddy didn't trust his test kit and they were all the same so i guess it it didn't matter you know that way but we tested it and i mean it was said it was pure mdma um and it was just a little pressed pill man i'll never forget it couldn't have been more than you know a centimeter and a half in diameter and it was blue and it had a, a star imprinted on it and that was the first one we did and we we just popped it and it was just a point one we've seen double stacks um, this most recent forest, we took double stacks, but that first time it was just a blue press pill with a star on it. And it was just, you know, it was enticing just looking at it and, uh, yeah, we popped it. And, you know, by the time we got into the venue, probably about 20, 30 minutes walking up to the venue, getting past security and whatnot, you could kind of start to feel it hidden. Uh, and then about that 45 minute mark, I mean, it was, it was on, <laughs> What does uh what does the come up feel like? In all honesty, every time that I've done it, which has been every summer since then, uh, the come up is I hate it. I hate it every single time. The best, and I don't smoke. I don't smoke cigarettes, and that's the only time that I will ask for a cigarette. The best way I can describe it is if you know I'm just trying to walk a straight line down the sidewalk. And you're you're hanging on to my back or you're pulling my shirt. That's just the best way I can describe it is it's just like somebody it's like I'm just I'm pulling, you know, two hundred pounds behind me. It's every step I take is just hard to you know, to get there. It's like I'm just dragging two hundred pounds behind me, but it's only like that for about ten or fifteen minutes. And after that it's like I don't know, man, you just, you just, all the weight lets go and you're just walking into a field of, you know, wildflowers and you're just, you're there. It's where you want to be, I guess. 
for somebody who's never done Molly or ecstasy MDMA, how would you describe that high? T- to me, I mean, I, I felt it everywhere. Um, I could really feel it in my face. And it's one thing that, you know, my friends and I even joke about. It was, I spent, you know, countless times throughout the night trying to take my sunglasses off my head and off my eyes. But like we weren't wearing any sunglasses or anything. It was just, I felt it everywhere. It was just this pulsing, obviously rolling, but just this pulsing, you know, vibrating feeling that you felt that you felt everywhere. You felt it internally. I felt it when I was walking on top of the mulch, um, you know, shake somebody's hand. You could just feel, you know, their presence, you know, in a physical sense, 100%. Like I said, you could feel it everywhere. You could feel the air around you. I, I could honestly feel the vibes that people were giving off. Um, you know, maybe whether they're complimenting your sunglasses or just, you know, chit chatting to you, smoking a joint in the forest or whatever it is, you could feel everything. The two two parts of the description you give, one is kind of a physical sensation where you feel like everything is pulsing internally and externally but then the other part is mental where or it sounds mental where you feel everybody's vibes yes the physical part is that pleasant oh i think so 110 percent i've not to say I've ever heard of anybody having a bad experience on that, but I mean, that's, it was just, it was just, you know, the best, the best feeling. Like I said, I know you could, you, you, I could feel their vibes and I know you can't see it obviously. Cause it's not there. At least it's not, you know, something that we could see with the naked eye, but it's just that kind of ultimate awareness of where you're at, what you're doing. And it's in that specific moment it's just you're you're there you're there having a good time i'm not worried about you know the 30 purchase orders that are sitting on my desk that's gonna have you know i'm gonna have to come back to i'm 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 just there in the moment enjoying the presence of myself the presence of my mentality but uh you know my buddy ben who is just smiling ear to ear as we're just walking we're not walking in any particular direction we're not walk into a stage or a set we're just walking through the forest and looking at the lights and just you know listening and just being observant and just being 100 percent there So part of the rave culture and the Molly culture is the use of lights in music. What does that do for the high? To, to me, honestly, I think it just it just amplifies it. You know, it's for me, it's, it's one thing for us to be, you know, on that come up or, you know, walking past a stage and know that you're rolling. But once and, and I encourage you and I guess every other listener here as well. When you get a chance, if you're into that type of scene, look up Electric Forest Music Festival. They spend countless hours of decorating the forest, Sherwood Forest, just with different types of lights and exhibits and all this different stuff. And it's, to me, it just it just amplified everything. Um, I felt as though that the bright or the lights were a lot brighter than what they might have been. Um, certainly not a bad, bad thing or in a bad way at all. It was just, I felt as though everything was more enhanced, you know, going back to that physicality feeling, but just, you know, everything was just enhanced, including, you know, including the colors and the lights that that helps. I've, I've done Molly and ecstasy quite a bit myself. I've never done it at a festival. Whenever, whenever I do some sort of substance like that, I'm usually kind of 
I usually stay indoors. I'm usually with a, a friend and that's how I've always kind of rolled, you know? Um, right. I, I have tripped outside, but I think I, for whatever reason, I like to, if I'm going to trip, I like to kind of go out there a little ways. Not, not a hundred percent, not to the point where I am just out of my head, but to where if somebody were to see me, they would know that I'm high. You know right. what I mean? And so I usually just stay indoors. So the fact that I'm kind of learning about the whole, this music festival scene, one, it sounds really cool, but you're also kind of like taking me through it because I don't, I don't know a whole lot about it. So I'm really just kind of exploring myself. Right. And it's, it's funny that you bring that up or that you mention it in that way. And, you know, no, I'm not talking down or, you know, anything towards you, but I, to, to me, and like I said, it was the first time I did it was at this festival and it's the only time I've ever done it. Uh, you know, we might do it twice a weekend or something every time we go down there. But even now, like if somebody, you know, if my friend were to come in my apartment right now and ask if we wanted to do it, I would do it. But I just I couldn't imagine myself doing it outside of that environment because I and I don't know because I've never done it outside that environment. But I I'm almost confident that I wouldn't think I could enjoy it to the degree that I already have. There's just, there's there's nothing like it. And I can say that with confidence, knowing damn well that I have not done it in the environment that you have. So this environment that you do it in, do you, are you able to connect with people? Are you able to kind of like, I guess, vibe on a deeper level? Oh, ab- absolutely. What are those conversations like, or what is that a uh, connection like? A lot of the quote unquote conversations that I've had with people have just been, you know, no, no words spoken. It's just, you know, a lot of times you, you roll into a festival that big with your friends, you're going to get separated. And if you can't, you know, handle that amount of people and that type of stuff, then it might not be up your alley and that's okay. But to me, I mean, I thrive in that. I can carry on a conversation with anybody. I'm a very outgoing person, but when you're just, when I'm out there, you know, rolling, especially rolling hard and. I can, I can just, I've just looked at people and, you know, smiled and, you know, they're smiling back and it's just, you know, me and this, this guy or me and this girl and we're just, we're just dancing, listening to the music, just enjoying 100% each other's company, even if no words are ever spoken. Yeah, that sounds actually really awesome, especially it feels like in our society, we are kind of locked into ourselves a little bit and the way that you describe this experience you basically open up and are very in tune with the current situation and which means that if there's other people in that situation then you are very in tune with them right why do you think it's illegal that (laughs) <laughs> that, that is that is a very good question. I I wish I could have more of an answer for that than what I do. I I mean I, I I genuinely don't know. I have this conversation, you know, with whether it's you know my girlfriend or you know my friends or even my friends as parents for that matter. It's I don't know T- today, especially in today's world. I I think a lot of it has to do with just the older generation. I mean, they're the ones that's typically, you know, maintaining, you know, Congress seats and legislature and, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, I think that that has some sort of connotation to it. At least I don't think that all of them, you know, understand, you know, what I'm portraying um, or, you know, the experiences that I've that I've had. I think that has something to do with it. But I I wish I had more of an answer for that. I, I genuinely don't know. But that's something I tell my buddies, uh, you and everybody listening for that matter. If you ever get an opportunity to go to a music festival like that, a dance and EDM music festival, you will have the time of your life. It's just you're you're just you're going to be there and you're going to have a good time. And if you can if I could take that feeling. Every day, I wouldn't have a problem, you know, cutting 80 purchase orders a day you know, managing inventory at three warehouses across the country. 
you basically you're you're saying if I could just willingly and just eagerly dive into the present moment, I would do that daily. Right. What does it feel like to come down off of this? Um, and in, in my experiences, I guess I've always kind of noticed to come down, um, you know, past the, the chewing on your bracelets and feeling like you've done chewed a hole in your jaw past, past all that. In my experiences, um, I felt as though that it, it, it it typically just ends kind of abruptly. Um, you know, this, this past electric forest, we were watching, uh, marshmallow, the, the DJ we had, rolled right before his set we were watching another artist and we ended on his set and it was just it was to me it was just like the flip of a switch it was just like oh man like i'm done like this i'm still having a good time but like this sucks like i was feeling real good like 20 minutes ago but that's just always been my experience with it you experience any depression or anything afterwards uh, after doing Molly, no, but after leaving the festival every year. Can you describe that? Why is that? Well, I mean, I can give it to you in a couple of, in a couple of ways. When we went the first year, uh, it was the summer of 2015. It was right after me and my buddy's freshman year of college. And it was just one of those things. We showed up on a Thursday and it went Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. And we got back probably like. 1 2 p.m our time monday and i went and you know it's a festival i mean you can pay for a shower and we do now but that first year we didn't really know what to expect so i mean we were just kind of like hippies for a weekend you know i was just taking a shower and i was just i was just standing there you know letting all that water run over me and i was just like damn like i gotta go back to work tomorrow you know i've met all these people you know whether it's you know snapchat or facebook you know i got you know, festival, festival friends and festival family from South and North Carolina, California, all these people that I met and had very engaging conversations with. It's almost like, like I said, you just flip the switch off. It's just like, okay, well, like none of that is happening right now. Like I can't stop thinking about the fact that I have to go back to work tomorrow. So like after festivals, yeah, I whether it is called this or if it's called something different, I mean, I just call it post festival depression. Um, it's just it sucks. You all those experiences, all those conversations, all those feelings, those vibes, those colors, those lights. You're not gonna get it again until either you go back or you go to a different festival. Do you think you feel that way because the substance, because Molly, it helps accent those attributes of the festival? Or do you feel that way genuinely just because the festival atmosphere sans drugs is so the, good? The, the latter, just the, just the festival in, in general. Um, you know, when we went this past year, you know, there was uh, two days, two days, two nights where I didn't, I didn't do anything, you know, completely sober. And it's that same, the same experience. I can be a hundred percent sober and you can be out there, you know, rolling your face off, but you know, I'm still going to connect with you. I'm still going to, you know, invite you over to our campsite. You know, hey, you know, we're cooking burgers. Do you want something? Or we're about to go in. Do you guys want somebody to walk with you? You know, whatever it is. I think the drugs actually help. Or sorry, not actually, but I think the drugs definitely help, you know, in the nightlife in that aspect. But for me, it's just it's just the festival. Yeah, you can be 100% sober and still just feed off everybody else's vibes, whether or not they're on anything or whether they're sober too because you meet both types of people you meet people who stay sober the entire weekend or that this dude that's as old as my grandpa that's out here is probably rolling harder than i am but you know him and i are just dancing up a hell of a storm do you do you see the same people year after year yes um i have simply because you know when we went in 2015 we stayed connected and you know we had these conversations, these engagements, these, you know, times and memories of us, you know, walking through the forest or, you know, that time where the biggest thunderstorm I've ever been a part of came through over our tent at 630 in the morning. And we helped our campsite, but everybody else's campsite, we helped clean up, 
you know, water and, you know, soaked shoes and that sort of stuff, uh, you know, that we just wanted to stay in touch with people. So I've seen the same people, yes, not so much as if you're going to pick up what I'm putting down, you see the same types of people all the time. Whether, and you know, you can look at somebody and say, you remind me a lot of somebody that I met back here, you know, back in 2015. What is that type of a person? Just as much as I hate the terminology, but it fits so true. Just free spirit. It's just that free spirit, free living, you know, in this moment, whether the moment is right now or this next DJ set or, you know, this four day weekend, it's just, this is here. You know, this is why I'm here. This is what I'm doing. You know, I'm here to have fun and experience the forest and it's just people out there, you know, having a good time getting away from their regular day to day life, whether they're cutting purchase orders or whether they're, you know, a dental hygienist from, you know, um, mother, I'm not even going to pronounce the name is a podcast I listened to yours today. Um, mother mycelium. Yes. Yes. I listened to that one today. Uh, everybody just gets away from what they do every day and everybody just comes together for this four day experience. This episode was produced by me, Philip Johnson. You can find a list of all songs used in the description section of this episode. If you liked what you heard, please subscribe. Also, leave a review. Let me know what you think. Lastly, if you have a story that you'd like to share, I'd love to hear it. Shoot me an email at psychotropicpodcast at hotmail.com and let's make something happen. Thanks again, everybody. See you next time.